I served in Northern Ireland. Uh, I chaired three separate sets of discussions over a period of five years. When I returned to the United States, I wrote a book about my experience. I think that's the last time I was here uh, when that book was published. Uh, and uh, in that book tour around the country, uh, I received a very large number of invitations from Irish American groups, understandably. But I learned in that process that in the United States, there are more Irish American organizations than there are Irish Americans. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was deluged with these requests. I, I couldn't do them all, but I picked out several. And as I traveled around the country attending these events, they had developed among them an informal competition as to who could give the longest, most extravagant, sometimes rather fantastic introductions of me. The proper reaction, of course, would have been to show some humility, to urge them to keep it short, to don't be repetitious. I had an improper reaction. I loved it. Uh, I encouraged them. I scolded them when they left something out. Uh, one guy took 35 minutes uh, reading a very long litany of everything I'd done in my life, which included several things which I'd not previously been aware of. <laughs> and when he finished, I criticized him for leaving out the fact that in my junior year in high school, I won the science award. <laughs> well, by the time I got to the very last stop on this tour, it was the Irish American Society of Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, I was very impressed with myself. My head was so swollen I could barely fit it in the front door. When I walked in, the first person I encountered was an elderly woman who rushed up to me very excited and nervous, vigorously shook my hand, and then he praised on me saying what a great man I was and how she didn't live anywhere near Stanford. She drove three and a half hours just to come there to shake my hand, to tell me how much she admired me and to ask me if I would sign her poster. And she handed me a cardboard with a photograph on it and a pen. And I looked at it and I said, I'll be very happy to sign your poster. But before I do, I think there's something I should tell you. She said, what is it? I said, I'm not Henry Kissinger. <laughs> uh, it was a photograph of Henry Kissinger in a building festooned with signs and pictures of me. She said, you're not. She said, well, who are you anyway? <laughs> and so when I told her, she was obviously disappointed. She said, well, that's just terrible. <laughs> she said, I drove three and a half hours to meet a great man like Henry Kissinger, and all I've got is a nobody like you. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry you feel so bad. I said, I wish there's something I could do to make you feel better. After a brief pause, she said, well, there is. I said, what is it? She leaned forward in a conspiratorial manner. I leaned forward. Our foreheads were touching. She said, nobody will ever know the difference. <laughs> she said, uh, would you mind signing Henry Kissinger's name to my poster? So I did. And it's hanging today in eastern Connecticut as a daily reminder to me not to take these introductions too seriously. Now, most of you have heard Henry Kissinger speak, <laughs> so here's the best part of the story. Uh, about a year ago, uh, he and I appeared jointly at a conference in Manhattan, and there was a moderator and two chairs, and he asked us questions about world affairs, and I thought it would be a good time to tell this story, <laughs> and uh, I did. And the crowd laughed, and Henry seemed to enjoy it. And we went on with the program. After the program, we found ourselves in the elevator going down to the ground floor together. And he said to me, I've heard you speak often. When you were Senate Majority Leader, we've appeared together several times. He said, but I have to tell you, never have I heard you better than you were tonight. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> was it my answer on China? The Middle East? No, 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 he said. It was that story you told in the beginning. <laughs> he said, that's a great story. You should tell it all over America. <laughs> so I do, and I keep a list. 
And every time I see him, I hand him an updated list, and politics and bros is on the next list I hand him, Washington, D.C.